I'd love to be able to say we were waiting for Bob and Julie, but I apologize. <laughs> we, were, we, we did, Bob, uh, but only because I had the wrong microphone. We have like 18 microphones, had the wrong one. My apologies. Uh, welcome to the uh, second Sunday of Easter. It is good to have you here. Uh, we pray the Lord is going to guide and direct us and bring us together through car doors and uh, so unite our hearts together. Um, I would point out to you a number of things from the bulletin. In your bulletin at the uh, uh, back end of the uh, booklet are the announcements. They are included for you, uh, so please take a look at them. Uh, there, uh, if you would, if this is your first time and you have not done communion here, would you just flash your lights? I don't want to have you beeping to identify yourself. Okay then I will assume all of you know how to do it. The one warning, because I did it wrong myself the first time, uh, when you open the tab, the first one on the top uh, is the clear plastic. Don't pull the whole tab, just the clear plastic. That gives you access to the wafer. When you pull the other larger tab underneath, that gives you access uh, to the wine. Uh, yellow insert, we do ask you to complete that. Obviously, we don't have the worship registry going from car to car. We hope you will complete that, give us the information that's needed there, and drop that off as you're pulling out. You'll see some assistance there, gathering your offering, if you'd like to make your contribution, uh, and also those yellow inserts. Uh, dismissal. Um, you know, uh, it, it shouldn't be so difficult, but we don't really want anybody having fender benders on, on the church property or anywhere else. Uh, but please follow the directions of the parking lot people uh, so that they'll coordinate it. Everybody will get off and get off safely. Uh, I would also mention uh, I'm using one of the early versions of the bulletin. Um, the first hymn is also being served, uh, serving as the last hymn. So when we begin the service, the opening hymn, the first three verses uh, are the way we begin. At the end of the service, you'll go back to that page and uh, you have the second, uh, the, the fourth and fifth verses as well. All right. Uh, anybody who knows anything, did I forget something? Yes. Oh, the mask ministry, if you would like to assist with that, um, that mask ministry uh, is uh, an opportunity for us to provide them to worshipers as they need them when they come in, uh, or there's another uh, specific design for hospitals. Take a look at the materials, Sidney Rossetti coordinating that, our quilting ministry, which goes down a lot smaller, but nonetheless, the mask ministry is there. Okay. All right, well, it is good to have you here. Uh, if you would, please wave at each other, say hi. If you need to move your car to be able to see, if you can't see me now, you won't see me later. Thank you for moving back there. All right, so good to have you guys here. Uh, we begin with a call to worship by the choir. Imagine 
so great a mercy, what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no tame on me jesus yours is the victory Hallelujah, Jesus is risen, the first three verses. Go ahead. As I said, could I get a different bullet? <laughs> so let me clarify, good Christian friends, let's rejoice and sing with the first two verses. This will help. <laughs> the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and And cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we have celebrated with joy the festival of our Lord's resurrection. Graciously help us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with the first lesson. The first lesson is from the book of Acts, the fifth chapter, starting with verse 29. But Peter and the apostles answered the Sanhedrin, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all people, stood up and ordered the men to be put outside for a while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you do with these men. For before these days Thutis arose, giving himself out to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. But he was slain, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean arose in the days of the census and drew away some people after him. He also perished and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of men, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice, and when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day at the temple and at home, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Here is the first reading. Psalm 16. Preserve me, O God, for in thee I take refuge. I say to the Lord, Thou art my Lord. I have no good apart from Thee. As for the saints in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their libations of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. Thou holdest my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. 
I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also dwells secure. For thou dost not give me up to Sheol, or let thy godly ones see the pit. Thou dost show me the path of life. In thy presence there is fullness of joy. In thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second lesson comes from 1 Peter, the first chapter, starting with the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, which though perishable by, is tested by fire, may redound to praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Without having seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him, you believe in him and rejoice with an honorable and exalted joy. As the outcome of your faith, you obtain the salvation of your souls. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands in his hands the print of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. 
Holy, gracious, and heavenly Father, we do thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you for the coolness of the breeze, uh, for the cloud cover, uh, for this good weather that we might focus this day on the peace of your word. We thank you for that word made flesh, your son, who has gone to the cross and who we celebrate now and to eternity is risen from the dead. We pray that you would hear his prayers for us as he sits at your right hand. See in his hands the mark of the nails and the marks on his brow. Hear his prayers of the one you have risen from the dead for our benefit. Bless us in this day with your Holy Spirit, that we might not just hear this word, but that we might have understanding, knowing the gift that you have given to us to bring forgiveness to our hearts. Help us also to leave here, knowing your will towards us, to do your will in the world. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to go back just a a few years, uh, back to when I was, I don't know, about two years old, 1975. Uh, Some of you may remember uh, the sitcom that came out in 1975 and ran until about 1984. Does anybody remember the sitcom with Anne Romano? One day at a time. Does that ring? Okay. Uh, no beeping, but uh, you know, flash your lights if you've heard of that. Uh, you, 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 do you know that? And uh, Okay, a couple of people uh, know that. Uh, it's a story of a, a single mother who's raising two teenage daughters. That's another sermon for another day, so we're going to leave that one. But if you remember the, uh, uh, the sitcom at all, there was another character that you couldn't help but miss. Does anybody remember who the maintenance guy was? Schneider. Schneider was, he was called the superintendent back then. It's a fancy name for uh, uh, the maintenance person uh, uh, in the apartment complex where Ann Romano lived. And whenever Schneider would enter the room, there was one thing about him that you could not help but miss. Does anybody know? Anybody see what was around Schneider's waist? A tool belt. I mean, it wasn't just a tool. This was a tool belt. I'm telling you. It had everything in it. The hammer, the screwdriver, uh, a million pockets for the nails and screws. You had the tape measure, the wrench, the pliers, the electrical tape, the keys to every uh, uh, door in the building. You could not miss Schneider's tool belt. And if, you know, a good maintenance guy, uh, uh, if he's going to do what God has gifted him to do, he needs the right tools. Any Star Trek fans here? If you're a Star Trek fan, you know who Scotty is, right? You know, the engineer, and he's always yelling at the cadets, Hi, how many times do I got to tell you, you got to use the right tool for the right job? Any good maintenance person, any good fixer-upper guy, you remember your dad's tool belt? Uh, oh, I remember you know, being underfoot with my dad in his tool belt. We have this relationship with God now through Jesus Christ, and that is the gift of the resurrection. It is something, if you want some homework, um, go and just study. Uh, look at Peter's epistle lesson for today. That's your homework. And can there be any clearer uh, a, a depiction, uh, definition of the resurrection? There can't be. So that's your homework for today. Uh, But we have this relationship with God through through the risen Lord Jesus, who is risen, yes, today and yesterday and tomorrow. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We have this relationship through the living Lord Jesus, who is also the crucified Lord Jesus. The question is, when we leave here, is what do we do with that relationship? Is it something we just put on the shelf uh, to collect dust? Is it just something that's good to hear about? What do we do with that relationship? I mean, I I believe that I was here. A pastor just read the prayer of the day. And I think it really describes uh, what what we are to do with this resurrection relationship that we have with God. If I could, the prayer of the day. And just to remind you, you all said amen to this. You all said, let it be so. This is what we prayed. Almighty God, we have celebrated with joy the festival of our Lord's resurrection. And we prayed this. Graciously help us to show the power of the resurrection and all that we say and do. 
So we are asking, you said amen, I said amen, you said, you said amen, yes, we all said amen, let it be so. So what is it that we have been given? Uh, what are some of the tools that God has given us to show the power of the resurrection? Just in case you're wondering what kind of tools God has given us, uh, you know, just, you know, are they ordinary tools? Are they, you know, how would we describe them? I think Timothy describes it this way. God has not given us a spirit of timidity, uh, cowardice, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. It's not about you, but I'm thinking God's a power tool kind of guy. I, I'm thinking God has a, he, he invented Tim the tool man. So when God gave us these tools to use, he, uh, 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 he, these are good power tools. Now the, what are these tools that we have to show the power of the resurrection? I mean, this is new territory for the disciples. They are operating on the old tools, right? The despair, the, the, the living life without hope. That's the definition of despair. They're living with the tool of fear, hiding from the Jews that killed their master and are very likely looking for them as well. And then can we just say Thomas's nickname? He is Doubting Thomas. The disciples here, whether they are present or whether they are away like Thomas at the first visitation of Jesus, they are operating with old tools. They are operating in the old life. So we have a number of power tools. And just because I really don't want anybody in the clinic uh, uh, with more back pain than they need from a long sermon sitting in your cars, uh, I'm going to give you the four, but I'm going to focus on one. The four power tools that we see in the midst of this gospel lesson, uh, the peace that Jesus offers, uh, that's a power tool, believe it or not. There is a commission we are given by Jesus. Uh, as the Father sends me, so I send you. That's the second one. The third one is the gift of the Spirit, the power tool that is the Spirit that brings us to the ability to believe. And then there is the power of the keys that's on the tool belt, the keys that open the door to the kingdom of heaven. Uh, Jesus says to Matthew, uh, in Matthew, says to Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom, and it's going to be the power to bind and loose sins. Those are the four power tools. But, you know, I, I'm just thinking, I, I, you know, I'm dense, but I'm not that dense. I can take a hint from Jesus. If I could talk about uh, any of these power tools, what about peace? What if we were just to focus on that one? I, I can go 15 minutes on that. Uh, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I mean, that's how uh, uh, peace is described. Jesus says to his disciples, peace be with you. Anybody understand what that peace is? It's not United Nations peace. This is not something done in the government. It's not something done in the external world. I mean, I don't know at this point in the church here if we're going to look backward or forward on Christmas, but I think it's, it, it applies. Luke chapter 2. Glory, remember the, the shepherds, they're there, and, and the, the glory of the Lord shines around them, and there's the heavenly host. And remember what the angels said. I mean, we, we turn it into a song. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace among men with whom he is pleased. I'm going to use a big seminary term here. That peace is an upsy downsy thing. You know, I learned that in seminary. It's an upsy down. This is the peace that comes from God and is planted in us. We're going to try and share that peace uh, on earth, but it is a first and foremost a gift from on high that God gives to us in the reality of the resurrection. What kind of, what's that peace look like? I mean, let's look at Jesus. Matthew chapter 8. I mean, the, uh, let's go across the Sea of Galilee, and, and these are experienced fishermen. They say, okay, Jesus, but you know the Sea of Galilee, that, that it's prone to storms at certain times of the day, and the, the disciples knew, and they're going across the lake, and, 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 and this huge storm comes up. And, and, you know, what's Jesus doing? He's helping them bail, you know, he's giving order. No, where's Jesus? He's sleeping in the back of the boat. He's sleeping on the cushion. 
And the disciples, I almost wonder if, if maybe, you know, he's fake sleeping and has one eye open. <laughs> when are they going to come to me? When are they going to seek me out? And they finally do. They're bailing their life away and you know, doing everything they can. And they finally come to Jesus and say, Lord, don't you care that we are perishing? And Jesus calmly gets up, zip, zip. Where's your faith? They, the peace that comes from following Jesus. And they were amazed. What kind of peace could do that? What, what kind of risen Lord Jesus could do that? That in the middle of, you understand we're going to, I mean, it's a little cloudy. There might be a storm coming today, but you know that's not what I'm talking about. That there are storms in life. I mean, let's just be real. I mean, this is real application of God's, God's peace. I mean, where does Peter and the disciples, how do we get from here in John 20 to Acts chapter 5? Where do Peter and the disciples get the peace that they, it was really right. They rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer for the name. Rejoiced in their suffering? They must have knew Paul. They didn't. At some point they did. But Paul wrote about it. Paul lived it. That we can rejoice in our sufferings because of this gift of peace in the midst of the storms of life, in the midst of despair, doubt, and fear, we have the Lord's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be in you. Peace to you, inside you, where the Lord Jesus lives in our hearts. So we experience uh, in the realities of life when the storms come, when relationships and families and marriages and in the world and the workplace, when those storms come, we have a peace that others don't have. We, we can experience, just like the disciples in the boat in the midst of the storm, we can and we do experience the power and the care of Jesus. Is it that Jesus said in Matthew, uh, Matthew 11? I mean, there was this thing about a Sabbath rest. And Jesus is talking about, come to me. I mean, Jesus was breaking the Sabbath left and right. And he even says of himself, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The day of rest, the, the day to take a rest from our labors. The, way, the, the day to take a rest from our labors and have the peace that can only be had in the word. Come to me, all ye. <laughs> Come and hear my word. Come to me. Isn't that what we're doing? Come to me, all ye who are heavy laden and burdened, and I'm going to give you rest. I am going to be that Sabbath rest. So we're here today to rest from our labors, but you know, God's not resting. He, he, he's actually gone to quite a bit of trouble, quite a bit of work so that we could gather here today. Not in a last-minute plan, but that plan from before the foundation of the world that brings us to this day of peace where we, we celebrate that gift of the resurrection and the peace that comes from that relationship that we now have with God through Jesus Christ. So we have that power. We, we have this power tool that is the peace of the Lord. And, and that is... Believe it or not, I mean, that is one of the things, I'll, I'll speak for myself, it's one of the things that I miss the most about not being able to shake hands with someone right now, is when we, sh we share the peace of the Lord. Because you know that that is a prayer. That, and, and you can even do it here with someone in your car or someone across the way. Look them in the eye. The peace of the Lord be with you. Make it a prayer. I mean, it really is. I don't know what Julie's week is going to be like this week. I don't know what Nan's, uh, uh, I don't know what any of your weeks are going to be like. I don't know what my week is going to be like. But I pray for you that no matter what that week holds, that the peace of the, that peace of the Lord would be with you all. Can make that a prayer for others and for ourselves. Pastor Peacock and I were a man in the office. So he was manning the office. I happened to come in. He helped me do some things. But uh, we're there, and, and uh, one of our members who uh, passed away in the last few weeks, his widow came in, and his adult daughter. 
and his little baby granddaughter, cutest little bow in her hair. Any storms in that life right now? Of a life that passed away of brain cancer and spread throughout his whole body. Where does that peace come from? What peace would she be seeking? But the word wants to know when all these restrictions are lifted. When can I come? When can we come to hear the word of the Lord? When can we come to experience to know this peace that comes from God's word? Because we're in a storm right now. We need that peace. It's the peace of the Lord that passes all understanding. That is the gift, the power tool that we have today. It's the power that we take in the world to show the power of the resurrection. Clearly, Thomas needs this. (laughs) The doubting one uh, needs uh, this living Lord Jesus. He doesn't just need the living Lord Jesus. Uh, He needs the living Lord Jesus that is also the crucified Lord Jesus. In this resurrected Lord Jesus, we see in his we see in the marks in his hands, and we see in the his side and the crown of thorns, the marks that are left, we see the marks of his work for us, that we would have peace with the Father. The peace that surpasses all the storms of life. Doesn't make them easier, but it gives us a way through them. That's the gift of the peace. That's one of the most misunderstood things about the Christian faith is that when you become a Christian, all your problems go away. I, you know, can I just say hooey fooey? There's <laughs> another good seminary term for you. This peace of the Lord does not take away our challenges, but gives us the blessing of a way through them. With the gift of his peace, and a plan from before the foundation of the world. So that power is in us. When we are calm and we are focused in the midst of the storms of life, do you think others see that? I mean, the world's going nuts and you're where? A drive-in worship? What on earth are you? What, I, what in heaven are you doing here? <laughs> you believe this peace has a bearing on your life? People see that calm and that focus in us and they wonder, they may even ask you, how do you do this? Why do you do this? I got peace (laughs) from Jesus. They see that and it doesn't seem very powerful to be calm in the midst of a storm, but it does speak to a world that is mired in darkness, a world that's mired in fear and a world that's mired in doubt and the world that's mired in despair without the reality of knowing the risen Lord Jesus. So I pray that peace. (laughs) I pray that that power tool would be in our belt that is the resurrection. God has put in that tool belt the power of his peace. Let us pray. Almighty God, we have celebrated with joy the festival of our Lord's resurrection. Graciously help us to show the power of the resurrection and all that we say and do. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Take a few moments to meditate on the Word and the will of God. Our hymn of the day in your worship bulletin, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine.
we now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed found printed on page 5. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy gracious and heavenly Father, we do thank you and give you praise for the peace that comes as a result of your resurrection, of the resurrection of your Son. Your word made flesh to go to the cross to condemn sin in the flesh and to rise to newness of life that we might follow him by the gift of your Spirit. We thank you for the peace that uh, guards our hearts and our minds through the gift of your Son. So we come here today to hear about the good news of his resurrection, of his appearance to his disciples. We thank you for appearing to us here, even this day, in the reality of your word and your sacrament. We thank you that we will be able today to see and to taste and to know that you are good. Thank you for appearing to us here this day with your word and with your meal to bring us the peace that we get to take with us and uh, share in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you also for the commission that you've given us for not sending us out into the world alone, but to send us with the gift of your Son. Not only have you uh, given us a commission, but you have empowered us by the gift of your Spirit, the power to bring faith, the power to bring trust, the power that brings uh, a ministry to be seen as faith and action. We pray that you would bless us in that mission with you, through and by your Spirit, that uh, what we say and do would truly preach in the world about the power of your resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you've also given us the keys to the kingdom. You've not just given them to the church to bind and lose sins, but you have given those keys to us that we might also offer forgiveness to others that through that forgiveness we might uh, let go of the hate, that we might let go of the anger, that we might let go of the resentment that comes from one who has sinned against us. Thank you for the key that frees us from sin, the gift of the forgiveness that we have, given, we have been uh, given in your Son, and bless us by your Spirit to be able to let that forgiveness not just flow to us, but flow through us to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, there are many in need this day and uh, many that come to mind and to heart for us. And so we offer them to you now, knowing that you have provided the peace that surpasses all understanding. With the faith that you've planted in us, we offer these names to you, both silently in our hearts and aloud on our lips. Or Chuck as he recovers in rehab, for Molly as she prepares at home. Pray for Teresa and the loss of her dad. Pray peace for her, and her family. The Osteen family in the midst of their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. All those on our hearts and on our lips, we entrust to you, gracious Lord, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let's wave the sign of peace as we... Share the peace with one another. God's peace.
At this time, we ask you to uh, bring forward the elements for communion. Have those ready as we begin the communion part of the service. Let us pray. We offer, merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please lift off the clear plastic tab. Pull that back. The body of Christ given for you. Pull back the second tab. The blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, Good Christian Friends Rejoice, verses 3 and 4. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.